Hi humans, how are you? It's me, Johnny Levi, and I am back to teach you a little bit more about hair. This is my dear friend, Michaela. I love her very, very much, and we've been with each other for many, many years. As you can see, Michaela hasn't been in for a little while. Her hair has grown out. She's usually very blonde all the way to the root with a beautiful balayage, which does mean we're gonna take a different direction today. Instead of teaching you just about haircuts, we're gonna add highlights to this gorgeous woman's head of hair and have a fun time communicating with you about how we met. We'll also do a gorgeous haircut with a little bit more of a curtain bang or a bottleneck bang. So I can teach each of you how to do that. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Thanks for coming back to my channel. We love you. Like and subscribe at the beginning of the episode. And Michaela, are you ready? So ready. How long has it been since I've done your color? Oh. Six months? At least, yeah. at least six months. We're usually like three months, um, but this is a beautiful winter head of hair and she's created a palette that I can really accentuate now that I have her depth and natural color in there. So let's go to town. I'm gonna show you what I mix, how I mix, the tools you'll need, and then how to execute the perfect balayage and haircut. Are you ready? For a successful partial balayage, the tools that you need are two brushes, one for your product and one for your board or planchette. You'll need cotton and saran wrap, which I do like to cover with a contact paper instead of just the cardboard it comes in as a matter of aesthetics. Um, keep your area clean. Make sure your bleach is the consistency of frosting on a cake. And let's go paint. Let's get to work, everybody. It's important for you to take step-by-step -step guides for you to succeed in this process. Feel free to be creative and have fun while you do it and don't get intimidated. Balayage is not supposed to be as meticulous as foils. It can be a little more free and fun, but I'll give you great tips and tricks to be successful, of course, right? First, a cape, number one. And number two, a backwards bib. If you don't have one, they're made by Frame Art, and it's a really, really great additive to your service. It protects your cape as well as your station's chair. And as a business owner, I can promise you we do spend quite a bit of money on the furniture, so it's nice to protect it. Once Michaela is comfortable and prepared, I'll ask her to tie the front end of the Frame Art backwards bib so that she doesn't feel that she's confined by the plastic and release her hair below. This gives you a great palette. I'll show you from behind. And everything's protected. So when we're painting her hair, it can lay directly on the backwards bib and you don't have to worry about your fabric getting bleach all over it. The next step is partings and sections. We're gonna do a partial balayage today. So I'm gonna start my sectioning Camera B will catch this. Hi, Camera B. My name's Johnny Levi. <laughs> this is the first parting of a partial balayage. We're gonna find the hairline behind the ear and section the front to the back. Same thing on the opposite side. I like to encourage very clean partings, as you know from watching our previous haircut videos. The cleaner and more organized the work is, the easier time the artist has when they're executing what they'd like. For a partial balayage, I'll turn you towards camera B. <laughs> this is gonna get annoying. <clears throat> For a partial balayage, I wanna work just past the curve of the head to start and everything above that. We don't need to go any further. If you wanna go one more step and they wear a ponytail a lot, I do encourage you to add a highlight here at the hairline behind the ear so that when the person is looking at you from the front, they have a bright swatch of color right around their jawline. All right, we're gonna start painting now. Um, I'm gonna start in the back at the nape so that we get a very nice bright swatch of color around her jawline from the front. 
It still counts as a partial balayage to me, but if somebody ponytails, this piece is really, really important, just like when we do foils, we're always taking into consideration the hairline in the back. I'm going to use a planchette or a balayage board. I'll paint starting at the base of the board and really nice swatches of color upward movement. The very first thing I'll have my model do is look down and turn to the left. This is gonna give me the flat of her neck to work with. One of the number one rules to remember when you're doing balayage is to keep the hair at zero elevation instead of lifting. That prevents any marbling when you paint. So I'm going to pull this piece in particular slightly away from her face so that it can be lifted into a nice ponytail. You'll see me start to paint at the mid shaft or um, the second third. So that's going to get confusing. There are three sections to the hair when we talk about balayage. There are one, two, and the ends are three. So from the root to the mid shaft is essentially one. There's a little bit of a gray line, but the mid shaft of the hair is the second. And then the third third of the hair is the very ends. So I always start in the second area and then I work my way into the first. Beautiful. I'll then lower my elevation, connecting my two points and I can bring the third third all the way down onto the balayage planchette and continue and easily drop my hair onto my backwards bib and we're done within a second let's move on i'm going to peel a little bit of bleach off of my planchette so it sits like a tootsie roll at the end of my painter brush then i will take my first v-shaped parting if I stay really shallow in my V, I'm going to get less hair painted down here. If I want a lot, then I can take a much deeper V and that will give me more hair at the ends to saturate. As you can see, Michaela is already blonde on her ends and I don't want to overly saturate, but she has a lot of her depth here. My goal today is not to oversaturate Michaela's hair. I want to make sure that she stays majority natural because she's worked really hard to grow her hair out and the health and integrity is great right now. So I don't want to overdo it. I'm going to take V's and actually maybe W's in my balayage painting. What does that mean? Well, there are two points to the root now, but if I choose to, I can add a third in the center. Pardon me for the flyaway hair. I'll just graduate it nice and soft up towards the root. And now you can see the letter W start to form in your balayage. We can also talk about how fine or broad the stroke of your brush can be. That being said, you can see here when I marry the W together that I get more broad with my stroke and then I'll graduate it up to create a casting of translucent bleach and that will create a nice amount of dimension in her hair. We are about to approach the crown of Michaela's head and this is a really important area. If you're a junior artist and you haven't really played with balayage a lot, you need to focus on where the hair lays and how it's going to separate naturally. Michaela does not have any major calyx or whorls. I'll show you from both cameras. Um, but her hair does tend to split uh, in the middle and a few other places. So you wanna make sure that you're gonna paint something that falls nicely. And what you really wanna watch out for is avoiding to paint 
on opposite sides of a split in the exact same location from side to side. If you do that and it marries back together, you end up with one solid highlight all the way down the hair shaft. The goal is to break that up. So I'm gonna split Michaela's hair a little bit. All right, in order to succeed while painting the crown of Michaela's hair, I'm going to take a bigger swatch than I did below to get a little more coverage. And I'm gonna start on the outside, which means because I'm left-handed once again, I have to reach my hand over, up and over to her right. And I'll start to paint mid shaft, so that second third of the hair. And on the left side, my arm can be a lower elevation. Once again, I'm gonna really focus where my point ends up near the split of her hair. Keep that in mind for later. Right now we'll paint that W shape, slowly bringing it up. If you wanna keep a little bit of a tip, I'm gonna use the end as an eraser, as long as it stays clean, so I'll wipe it with my towel when it's not used. A few things that I'd like you to keep in mind. I personally prefer when I am painting to always paint down the hair shaft instead of upward. You can see that it just keeps the paint consistent where it's placed. All right, so take note of where we ended up near the root here where her hair splits naturally. The key to success is not only to leave natural in between so that there's depth, but to place the point on the opposite side somewhere else. It can't be a mirror image. It needs to be a little bit unique. All right, so I can show you in detail the back of Michaela's hair. I'm gonna have Michaela look up in the air. All you need to notice is that the points of her split or cowlick are different and varied so that we have a little bit of depth in between. And then when it comes together, you see that this point at the root will start slightly off the center of this, and then this right above that, kind of brick laying, if you will. Just keep that in mind as you choose how you're going to paint your guest's hair. All right, we're back. We have painted the back half of Michaela's hair. We're gonna paint the front half now, and I'm gonna show you a few tips and tricks along the way. It's really simple balayage for everybody and I'm really excited to show you. So let's get back to it. All right, um, what I'd like you to remember while we paint the front is to split it into two sections so that you can work one behind and then two at the hairline. I'm always gonna have the hair, let me rephrase that. I'm always going to try and have the hair at zero elevation so that I can cancel out the chance of marbling I'm gonna hold my brush at the tip so that I can just flip my hand back and forth or my fingers like that, really nice and light. And at zero elevation, I can take my balayage, painting it down the hair shaft. I can go as thin as an angel hair pasta or as thick as a linguine or um, what is that, lasagna noodle. So I can do a really broad stroke that casts color all the way across my section, or I can take little teeny tiny areas. Um, when I do a broad stroke, I'm going to get softer detail. If I go into my pinpoints, I'm gonna get a lot of dimension because I'm creating a very, very opaque stripes in the hair, for lack of a better word. Okay. It's very important to remember that you saran and protect the piece that you paint right over the ear before you move on to the hairline so that when you paint the hairline and fold it back onto a canvas, it's not bleach laying on top of bleach. For the hairline, I always pull away from the face as though they are laying on the beach getting a suntan. I find that it looks most natural in a ponytail. So I'm going to start with the smallest section right by her temple. 
This can be either a very fine point or a broad stroke. I'm choosing a broad stroke right now. Paint away from the face and then just lay it down. It's very easy. The next step is a small piece of cotton. I'm gonna spread that out across that piece and then lower the second subsection just above or at the temple and I can paint another broad stroke piece. This is going to give Michaela a very sun-kissed, very beautiful, bright hairline. As I fold it back, I'll use my planchette, caress the hair lightly, and then place it on its beautiful little um, canvas of saran wrap. Easy and fun. I hope you guys all enjoy trying this. It is easy, it isn't intimidating, it is a little bit freeing. I don't know if you can hear me because of the surrounding. There you go. Easy breezy beautiful cover girl. As I prepare my next section, I want to talk about two people, Jackie Epperson, who works with L'Oreal Global, um, and was kind enough to come teach a class of balayage here at the salon, as well as Susie Powers, who showed me from start to finish, um, from early on in my career, how to balayage and to talk about balayage. Susie gets credited, Susie. Susie Powers should be credited with a lot of the terms that I use. She also has a YouTube channel, so I can actually add a link below for you to check her out. She's one of my favorite mentors, and I really appreciate the knowledge she provided to me. I am not a hair colorist by trade. This isn't my forte, but I love to play, and I'm not afraid to share the information that's been provided to me from my hair ancestors. I'm gonna ramble for a second, but I do truly believe that this industry is something that you pass down generation to generation, and that the only way that I really learned was when people physically showed me how to do things. So that appreciation for the people that have come before me is really high. I hope that you take that into consideration when you're learning from somebody. Those people that are willing to give you that information are helping generations of artists pass down their craft to you so that you can hopefully do the same thing for someone else in the future. That's my one second of inspirational quote. Now let's get back to painting. All right. We have now reached the top center where Michaela parts her hair. And this part is just as important as the crown. I'm gonna take one larger section and paint it zero elevation to the back. And then we'll focus on these pieces in the front, which are going to become a bit of a bang later on. As we do this, I just wanna talk about my friendship with this young lady that's sitting in our chair today. We met many, 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 many years ago, even though I am so young and gorgeous, um, when she was still in high school. high school. I think it was 2010. All right, so 2010, that was 13 years ago. I've since lived in Miami and she has since become an adult. <laughs> It's amazing. Why don't you share a little bit about why your middle part is so significant and um, how you and I are way ahead of the trend. Yeah, so 2010, um, when you were working at Jean Jorez. Yes, in, in Bellevue. Bellevue. I didn't even go see him myself. I went with a friend um, when she was getting her hair done and you were great and let me just sit and join and talk with you guys. And you looked at me and I was very confused with my hair at that point. I had tried side bangs and it was horrible. Couldn't find my thing. You were trying like that whole Taylor Swift side bang moment. It was bad. <laughs> I looked like an egg. It was a horrific time. But he looked at me and he said, you know, if you just do a middle part, you'll look like a Victoria's Secret model. And so I immediately, and I think you did it for me. I there. did make I think you it was, sit in my chair while I, that, that was probably the weirdest part is I kind of, I don't want to say kicked your friend out, but it was like, here, why don't you sit here and let me play with your hair for a, a few seconds. Yeah, and it changed my life, honestly. She's and never had a side part again. Never looked back. 
and <laughs> from then on you had my loyalty forever. That is true. So. Yeah. So we've, we've been able to communicate despite me being in Miami for a um, five year period of time. When I moved back to Washington, Michaela and I have stayed in contact thanks to that old school Facebook thing mm -hmm. you may have heard of. And um, we reunited and I've been doing your color ever since here at my salon, as well as when I worked in downtown Seattle before business ownership. And I feel very grateful. And, you know, I say that to you before I've told you literally that I love you like <laughs> after a service because the friendships we get in this industry are remarkable and unexpected. And uh, it's a gift that keeps on giving and, you know, not to be too crazy, but Michaela's going through transitionary life periods right now. And to be able to like spend time with her and brighten her life again and her hair again makes me feel like what I do is more than just what my hands provide. Makes me a happy, 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 happy human. Yeah. Cool, bye. We're gonna keep painting now. <laughs> And I have tissues for little tears. <laughs> As I work on the final part of Michaela's hair, I want to add one simple reminder, and that is fresh product is going to lighten the hair fastest. So it's important to mix your bleach, as my friend Susie would say, three times during a service. I usually do two, to be honest. So I'll do the back and then front half of the head. And now it's time for me to go mix new lightener so that we can get this to process as fast as the rest does without ruining the integrity of the back. I'll be back soon. Okay, folks, I'm working on Michaela's front right side. As a left-handed person, I'm gonna reach up and over. This is gonna be a broad stroke piece of hair. So I wanted to show you this in particular. We're gonna look for translucent coverage. What does that mean? It means that you can kind of see through the bleach into the hair shaft. What does this do? This is going to lighten the hair with less intensity than if we paint it with opaque coverage. So when I'm soapy and translucent, you can see the hair and it will lighten four levels or less. If I'm very opaque, we're gonna lighten six to seven levels, so you will get some variation. Beautiful. So we are actually gonna split this episode into two because we have a lot to do. Michaela's going to become blonder. We're gonna do a gloss, which you'll see a little bit of video content about in a minute. And then when you come back to the next episode, we'll cut Michaela's bottleneck bangs, give her layers and a little bit of a trim and show you our styling. I hope you have enjoyed the information I've provided so far. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like down below. I really appreciate it. I want you not hair people to know that in the next few episodes, we're gonna work with plants. I'm gonna teach you a little bit about sewing. I made this jacket I'm wearing today. We'll probably talk about makeup or something else in the beauty industry. And so stay tuned and get ready because the Johnny Levi Studio YouTube channel is just getting started. Woo! Michaela and I are now at the end of our balayage process. She has her toner on. Toner, gloss, and glaze, for those who don't do hair, are the same thing. I equate it to the top coat of your nail polish. It is translucent color that sits on top of the highlights that we just painted, and I can put anything there I want as far as color is concerned. Pink, green, blue, violet, orange, gold, red, it's up to you. Today we're doing a neutral, soft, sandy color so that it blends well with Michaela's natural hair. So when we come back in episode 2.56837, Michaela and I will take care of her bangs. Thank you for letting me paint your hair today. Here we go, and three, two, and...
Well, we should probably try that again. When we come back, Michaela's bangs will be ready to cut. And...